Tech Tips. Welcome to another Tech Byte Tips video. In today's video, we're going to be starting a new series. And this series is going to be regarding uh, open source applications, especially requests that I receive from people. And I want to focus this into analyzing the application to see first if it's a good application or if it's really not a good application that is not worth hosting, right? So this is going to be a series named Open Source Good or Bust, right? So this is going to be our first episode. And in this episode, I'm going to start with the Plex Meta Manager that was requested recently. I'm going to go over two applications uh, that were requested before that I said I was not going to cover in the channel. So I'll eventually write a creative video on those applications too. So let's get to that. Uh, this Plex Meta Manager, I was not aware of this application. I never used it. Uh, and I can see why I was not even aware of it. Um, it basically says that it's a tool that allows you to have control over your media libraries. And it's specifically talking about like Plex. So Plex is the application that you use to consume your content that you already have. So if you have music, you have TV shows, you have movies, uh, all of that, you can watch it or listen to it using the Plex server, the Plex application, right? And what this application, Plex Meta Manager, is supposed to do is it's supposed to change how Plex looks. So you can create your own collections, for example, of those files. And you can change like the tile image that is going to be shown for, for those collections, like the the thumbnails and you can connect it to services like the, the movie database, the IMDB, TrackT and things like that so that it, it kind of keeps track of what you're watching and you like and then pull that information of those things to give it to you in another display like in another way right so basically the application is just a, a thing that makes Plex prettier let's say for starters, that's a not, not good enough of a reason to set up an application, right? One thing that I would like people to understand is open source is very good because a lot of great applications have come out of open source, right? Because anybody can create anything they want, right? But open source also has a lot of applications that are useless, right? Just because you can create something doesn't mean that it's worth creating. Like you have to justify the effort of writing software with the benefits it gives you. And what I see with this application is that the benefits that it provides are not enough to justify hosting this application. Like if I go down here, you can see an example of what this application is supposed to do. Like first of all, in the screenshot, we're looking at Plex. So let's click here. Let's make it bigger and go to the top. As you can see, this is Plex. So what they did here is they created in the collections section of Plex a bunch of different tiles, a bunch of different cards for content organized in a specific way. For example, I can see here they have the Middle Earth collection, right? So I would assume that this means that, well, they currently only have one movie, but I would assume that you would put stuff like the Hobbit movies, uh, the Lord of the Rings movies, and maybe even the Rings of Power uh, TV series in there, right? So then you can have like a chronological kind of way of watching everything together, right? It would make sense, for example, if you're a, a Marvel fan, right? And Marvel has a bunch of like TV shows and movies that they are inter intertwined and they go in between each other. So it kind of makes sense, like if you want to watch it in order, which is very doubtful like not a lot of people do that right but if you want to do that then it makes sense you create a collection you put the the episodes on the movies in order and then you just watch it easily with plex because you keep on going on the list so that's mainly the the point of this application as you can see you can do different collections for different kind of things like star trek or if you want to separate like adventure stuff or action movies and stuff like that or maybe if you have videos of your vacations for example you could have like a a tile for i don't know my spain vacations my usa vacations and stuff like that right so so that's the whole point of this that, that that's the thing that concerns me about the app is that it's not a lot and you can do this in plex already right so to justify this, I would suppose that the application would make it easy for you to set up these 
collections, right? But then when we go down here and we look at the at the details, oh, let, let me just go over this one real quickly. So another thing that you can do is basically from what I can see here, it's on the tile, you can add, for example, the Rotten Tomatoes reviews and the movie database reviews and stuff like that. But to me, that's not worth it. it it's not something that I would host a whole application for just to get that. When that's already, when you click on the, on the banner, and you go into the details of the show or TV, you can already see that there. So I, it, it just doesn't justify, right? Um, so then I was wondering, okay, so maybe they do something else here and it justifies this, right? Maybe you can easily configure it in a web interface or something like that. But then I find this information here that says that you have to have a configuration file for the application. But then after you have that configuration file, you have to build collection files. And then when I click here, the collection files are just YAML text that you put somewhere in that server so that it then creates all those collections that you saw in the image. So then it doesn't even make sense. So why am I hosting a container and then I have to go back into my computer, create a YAML file and dump it into the application? It, it, it just doesn't make sense. What's the point of hosting the application? And then if I go here, I was looking at the Synology walkthrough to see how to set it up, right? And this just confirmed what I was saying. Like it tells you, you we're going to use Docker, we're going to use this image, and we're going to set it up this way. But then when I come here, well, at least they give you an option here to put the configuration file because this is not a Linux server uh, image. So you have to specify where you want that configuration file to be at. So if you go here, you have the PMM config environment variable, which you can use here to then specify, put it in the slash config directory. So that, that's good though. But when I go into the part here on the ports, this was nonsensical to me. It says we don't put any ports here because the application has no ports. So that tells me I'm running a container that does not provide me a user interface. If it doesn't provide me a user interface, it doesn't make it easy for me to create those collections because then I just have to go and create YAML files. I have to know how that YAML file looks like. I have to do extra work to create those collections. So it's, it's even worse. Like the use case is even worse in my opinion. It, it just doesn't make sense. In my opinion, this application as it is, doesn't make sense. My recommendation to the developer of this application is to give it more meaning, right? To make it actually useful for people. Instead of having people creating YAML files manually and having to put them in that, um, in that container somehow, create a user interface. Make that user interface as easy to use as possible. Because you, you also have to know who you're targeting here, right? You're targeting people that are using Plex to consume content that they have or that they downloaded, right? Or that they created. So this is not gonna be a person that knows a lot about computers, about containers, about YAML files, about anything of that. So you have to simplify it. You have to make it easy, give it a user interface so that a person that doesn't know anything about containers, applications, configurations, can go in there and actually use your application. So create a user interface, make it very easy for them to, with clicks, create their collections, adding stuff to those collections. If you already have a container, why not see if you can somehow read the files that are in the place that you're trying to run Plex and then just allow them to drag and drop or something like that to create the, the collection. It just is too unnecessary for your target users to have to go through all this process. That's my opinion. That's my suggestion to you. And try to see if you can do something else with the application because just creating modifications to the user interface of another application, honestly, it's not a good enough of a case for this application. You can go into Plex yourself and create the collections there. Yes, it's gonna take a little bit of time to go and add the stuff and create the collections, but you can do it there. There's no need for the application per se. So my evaluation of this is this is a bust as it is. 
it just doesn't provide enough for the target users to do what they want and it's just wasting resources in my opinion why do you have a container that doesn't show you a user interface that just changed how another application looks it, it's just not worth it so that's going to be it for this one in my opinion it's a bust uh, hopefully they can make progress and make it better because it looks like they do have a team of people working on this so they should have enough uh, capacity to make changes to this and make it more usable and eventually if it gets to a place where it actually makes sense to host this then i'll probably um, create a guide to for you to set it up in in docker for example in a synology or somewhere else but for now it, it's just not worth it so this is going to be it for this video we've already been over 10 minutes talking about this and i think that's enough so remember if you like the content like and subscribe share the videos so people uh, that can find it useful can actually benefit from it. Remember that if you want to support me to create good quality content for you, uh, there's a link in the description below with a PayPal link and you can also donate using Bitcoin. That would really help me to focus on the channel. So thank you very much for the people that have donated. I actually received that donation, I think it was last week, Christoph Gears. So thank you very much for your donation to the channel. I really appreciate it. Thank you, thank you very much. And well, we're just going to leave it like that. Uh, there's not much more to cover here. I'll see you on the next one. Take care. Have a great weekend.